come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Coming your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. In our quest for total world domination, which you can help us out with by going over to wherever you find it, found us and smashing that bell. Or hitting that like or subscribe button. Smashing that bell. Look at you, Colin. Yeah. <laughs> Colin's been watching YouTube. I've decided I refuse to be part of this. <laughs> we are on YouTube. For those of we you are, who found us there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you did just send smash me a, that bell. a very small, I I a very small check recently. So yeah, yeah, smash that bell. I cannot tell you how many times I have to explain to people. They're like, are you on YouTube? I'm like, yeah, we're on YouTube. I have to explain like how we're on YouTube, <laughs> yeah. but we're not. You don't have to it's watch just it. An yeah. audio Our part. podcast yeah. is on YouTube. Yes. I'm like, it's not a video. It's just audio. And yeah. they just stare at me. I'm like. It's just our logo. Like, yeah. there's no. But you should watch it there because we make the monies from there. So we please, do. please yeah. watch. Please YouTube. watch it on yeah. YouTube. Yes. We do. Yes. I'd, yep. like, I'd like to go on my next vacation. Yeah. And you can also have your assistant uh, say, like, Alexa, play the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. <laughs> so you said assistant. I'm, I'm hoping that and she I'm just did like, it right who now. Who out there has an assistant? Yeah. Like, what, what people are like, oh, you're, yes. what, your well, digital I was assistant. Say you're digital, but I'm like, is um, that fair? I was like, I am your electronic assistant. <laughs> assistant. Well, she's not analog. All right. Your personal assistant. What did they call Siri? Whatever. Uh, anyway, who Robot are? Robot Butler. There you go. <laughs> who are these people who are talking to you? I'll let you know. They are the Saturday Night Freak Show superstars. The internet radio superstars. Sorry, I screwed that up. Good grief. Superstars, all of them. <laughs> Starting with Colin, shut up, uh, uh, Sean. No, I want to hear these wheels <laughs> keep spinning. No, I want to. I want to. He's going to run out of air soon. <laughs> yeah. I'm I wanna, Sean, yeah. Holly, Michaela, and I'm Colin. It's as a manic Sean episode told you. tonight. No. Wow. I know, but it's because of the movie that we watched, which was chosen by uh, Michaela. <laughs> uh, it's the movie and it's the soap. But Michaela, yeah, soap. what did we watch tonight? We watched Cutting Class from the year. Uh, made in 1987, not released until 1989. Ooh, I wonder why. Uh, directed by um, Rospo Pallenberg. Oh, say that again. <laughs> Rospo Pallenberg, real person, real person. Spell um, it. Spell it and use it in a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> to know what to that could perform. <laughs> Rospo Pallenberg directed <laughs> Cutting Class. Yes. Yeah. Um, he actually wrote and uh, he's directed two movies: okay. Cutting Class. And The Exorcist 2, The Heretic. Oh, <laughs> well, he, he didn't He's an uncredited he, yeah, director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Okay. Well, he did. Did like they take it away of, from him? No. Um, well, or did he come? No, in I don't after. know this story. Go for it. Um, he was a writer with uh, the director John Borman. So yeah. he wrote Excalibur. Yep. And I think he maybe he wrote part of Deliverance. He yeah. They said he had creative input on Deliverance. That, that's and the he, creepiest and, thing yeah, for and, Deliverance that, creative input. And that's why people wanted to work for him in this movie because of Deliverance. Yeah. And I was like, that is. But I mean, think about it. So that's, okay, so if you're positioning like who this guy is, mm-hmm. right? He's writing these movies that are being like, these are big, right? big movies that are, have a lot of impact. Deliverance, Excalibur. Mm. I well, don't, I, don't I mean, wanna... Exorcist 2 was supposed to be a big thing, but yeah. now right. it's considered like... I don't like, want to spend any time with someone who worked on Deliverance or had That's kind of my thought, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're not asking you to spend time with the... The, the, the banjo, banjo kid. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't even want to really hang out with people that, re- that like the movie Deliverance. <laughs> That's a good movie. Oh, movie. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> if you get past... Holly, I hate to break it to you, but you spent the past like seven years hanging out with a couple people that apparently like I know. I was like, well, that, there's that. Yeah. yeah, it's a good survival yeah. story. Yeah. Fuck that movie. I don't, I don't care going. for it either. Yeah. yeah. Fuck um, that movie. So then he it's ended up stuff. becoming a director in le- very late, mm-hmm. uh, 87. Mm-hmm. With cutting class, correct. Cutting class. Oh, the, I thought you meant he became a director late in life. Well, uh, it seems like <laughs> it, right? I mean, if I he was know, writing these he movies in the seventies, right. and then, mm-hmm. um, well, I guess all the all three that we mentioned. Oh no, Excalibur was early eighties, but mm-hmm. uh, didn't he write the Emerald Forest? Yes. Also? Okay, so mm-hmm. that was yeah. So he like he was John Borman's writer, right? At Got one it. point, I remember a Fangoria interview with Stephen King. I think Rospo Pallenberg was the guy. He was either adapting The Stand or The Talisman. Mm. And, and one of those versions cool. that never got made. Yeah. yeah, But he was the guy who was doing it. Kind of want to see 80s. that. Um, like, let me guess. Stephen King said he was like the scariest writer of all time. Yeah. No, <laughs> he just said that he was doing, you know, he, he like right. said, you know, Russell no, Pallenberg is Yeah, that's it. now Stephen King. Yeah. 
Um, Everything's a masterpiece. Yeah. We need to talk about the writer for this movie. Oh, who wrote? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who wrote Cutting Class? Steve Slavkin. Ooh. Ooh, you all have seen something by Steve Slavkin. You just don't know it because he created <laughs> Salute Your Shorts. Oh, Shut dude. up! Oh, bravo! No! Oh, yeah. <laughs> he also was like, became kind of like a stable writer for like teen shows after that. He wrote sure. on Famous Judd Jackson, even Steven. Oh, my God. Uh, Power Rangers for a long time. He was a writer on. So, Good like, job, man. which, like, so funny. watching this movie, like, it has Power Rangers vibes. No, it yes. has Saved by, it feels like Saved by the Belt as a slasher movie. Like, like now that you say salute your shorts, I'm like, yeah, I yeah. see it. Mm-hmm. I oh, see yeah. it. I will resist the urge to sing the theme song. I have a <laughs> question. We row and go though. on trips. And I don't know if we know the answer to this, but I'm just curious. Like, like to me, there seems like there's possibly a disconnect between the writer and the script that he wrote, right? He's like, I'm going to write one of these teenage <laughs> slasher movies because they make money, so I'm going to crank one out. Mm-hmm. And then Roswell Palenberg is like coming off of these big movies, and he's like, well, I want to direct something, but he can't take it seriously i was like yeah i feel like yeah. he. i feel like he wrote a slasher movie and he directed a comedy yes. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah oh yeah well so this movie like is categorized everywhere as being a slasher slash black comedy but i don't know if that is like a retroactive thing or not i don't know if it was always marketed that because this was a direct-to-video movie so yeah. mm-hmm. i don't know if it was always marketed that way like how doom asylum kind of was or if Later on that life. later this on, this is like kind of like how the everyone involved at the room now is like, no, it was meant to be funny. And it's I like, mean, no, watching know. it, you know, there's no, stuff th- they they think they're making a. I mean, it's like a deadpan right. comedy, but right. they, it's there's comedy timing, yeah. right? It, That's why I think you're onto something. But it was written seriously, but directed comedically. I yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but then if everything he, else seriously as well, like music seriously. Yeah, because yeah, the producers are like, give us a, we want a slasher movie. That's the market that's hot. Mm-hmm. You got to right. give us a slasher movie. And Rospo's like having a lark at their expense. Yeah, right. that's how it I seems. This movie, because mm-hmm. he's playing beneath himself. Yeah. Right. You know? uh, yeah. Even though he wrote he, Exorcist too, He probably thought this was his punishment for something, maybe, right? Maybe. Yeah, well, like, it was an opportunity, yeah, yeah. I suppose. You know, it's like, oh, finally, <laughs> you get to direct. Anyway, who's a yeah. uh, big breakthrough performance is in this movie? Mr. Brad Pitt. I'm sorry. <laughs> I would say Martin Mull. <laughs> <laughs> it is you a performance, all capital and this P. This is Martin Mull's breakout performance. Yeah. I mean, it's one of his finest. Yeah, that's for damn sure. I didn't even know he was in this movie. And yeah. then, okay, but this also back. We also up. kept forgetting he was in this <laughs> <Yeah>. movie. <laughs> But he's a comedian in a movie, so yeah. there you go. It's a comedy. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, well, I mean the you... casting of Martin Mull kind of tells us. I don't know. His uh, journey tells us this yeah. is a comedy. Yeah. It's got, it's got yeah. to. But it's, okay. all, again, played so well, great. Yeah, yeah, I know. Because it's one of those, you know, it's it's going to be funny without, like, ever winking at you. <laughs> without ever winking. Yeah. Sometimes staring deathly <laughs> into your eyes it's, from behind a water cooler. Is, I'm starting to realize this is the kind of humor, like, I prefer than, like, a winking at the audience yeah. type of humor. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I like this. Yep. Yep. Like, yep. like this don't break that fourth wall at yep. all. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. The yep. entire yep. scene of him laying there in the swamp trying to get the attention of the class. Yeah. And the teacher's like, that's a bullfrog mating call. Yeah. Like, I was like, geez. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. That guy was wanting to going, I can identify every species out yeah, here. Yeah. He's like gasping. He's but I was wonderful. like, he knows. He knows he's doing comedy right yeah. now. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they, they know, know. What that is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it feels the sound like of an African bullfrog dying. <laughs> like I, I, I don't know. I, Holly and I have probably watched more Saved by the Bell than anybody mm. else here. But mm. Mm. like Saved by the Bell, the whole thing. Don't remember. Do you still watch it? Because no. I do. <laughs> but um, it that show always had the vibe of like it was. 60, 70 year old writers that had written on sitcoms for like 40 years trying to write yeah. what teens nowadays would yeah, talk like. That, this th- movie has that same energy. It's that, that meme of Steve Buscemi saying, like, What's up, fellow kids? How do you kids? do, fellow kids? Yeah. yeah. That was the writers of Say by like, the that's Bell. That's the equivalent of the writing on Say by the Bell. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's this movie kind of feels like it's cartoony right it's kind of yeah. like Scooby Doo <laughs> yeah. level of humor. There was you a know? very, there was a lot of Scooby Doo moments in yeah. this. <laughs> Because even the whole plot eventually kind of feels like this is going to be a Scooby Doo movie, um, yeah. or you know, like. So, did you enjoy that element of this movie? Yes. Yeah, because I was not expecting it. So, <laughs> okay. yes. But you do you do? I guess it depends on the movie. Then yes, it does. It does. Okay, but in this case, because I'm just I'm for the put my case for screen three oh, back in. Uh, I was like always going to argue something. <laughs> I can tell. But, oh, no, I won't argue it because <laughs> I'm not obvious. I'm just saying that's. Okay, good. Well, in this case, right, so th- for the listener who's listening to this who hasn't seen the movie yet, uh-huh. is it better if they go in expecting a comedy? Because I didn't. I went in thinking this was a slasher yeah, movie from the 80s. Too. 
and I'm like, there's some weird vibes in this movie. No, go in expecting straightness. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, then forget everything we just said. Cutting <laughs> Class is a serious, it's the slasher serious, movie straightest from slasher movie the either. 1980s. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, we're spoiling the <laughs> shit out of this movie. <laughs> Um, who else? Is, okay, so Brad Pitt is like Brad twenty-one Pitt. years old yeah. or something yeah. in this movie, really right? Young. Mm-hmm. Doesn't look a day over Brad Pitt, to tell you the truth. You know what I mean? Like yeah, over man. the years, he's just Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt, that's a bitch. Uh, mm-hmm. have horror movie he's, cred. Have you seen him lately? He's a little. He's getting a little puffy in the face. I would. The alcohol is not kindly to him. I mean, for <laughs> however yeah. old Brad Pitt is, he's still holding up. Um, he still looks good. He's yeah. done. Uh, well, we had him on the show. We did. Well, we had him. On the show. <laughs> we, we did. I was like, uh, we had him on the show. Unfortunately, <laughs> it was a lost episode with our early equipment, and you'll never hear the interview yep, with, Brad, the interview Pitt with Brad Pitt. We did a Brad Pitt movie. We did uh, Twelve Monkeys. Oh yeah, did we do another one. We didn't do California, but I mean, he's also interview with the vampire and World War Z. So he's done uh, at least three Genre. horror movies yeah. in his career. Mm-hmm. Needs to do another one. Seven. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yep, yep, yeah. I was okay. like, really? That's the big, big one, one yeah. right? right. <laughs> um, Let's get seven becomes seven, and then you're just like, oh yeah, seven, obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right now, because I keep thinking of it as a crime movie. It's a horror movie. Yeah. Yep. Um, who else is in this movie? <laughs> Jill Sholin. Ah, uh, Jill Sholin mm-hmm. coming back again to the back Saturday again. Night Free Show. Puts a big smile on my face whenever we <laughs> see Jill, Jill Sholin because she has like this personality and a voice. I, I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the, the husky voice. I don't think like. I, as far as like her range, right? She's always Jill Sholin. And yeah, right. Oh right. yeah, feels like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, for those but I was, of you, but who... I was watching a few parts in this. I was like, it works because she. When you would think she would look scared, she looks confused, and in this, it works. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just kind of because it's an underwritten part. It feels like that they give her in this movie because yeah. there's a lot of other characters that do a lot of the heavy lifting. But mm-hmm. you know, it's like it works because she is you know just kind of bubbly and you know, um, she was in the Stepfather. I think the same year as this, right? And that's when everybody kind of was introduced to Jill Sholin, and no one saw Popcorn. We did, us, we did. <laughs> which we said you yep. should watch. Yep. Yeah, that was, yeah, also, I like, we oh, yeah, the that guy one. with the mm-hmm. face and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but did anybody see the <clears throat> Robert England Phantom of the Opera? That she I still, still haven't seen, seen that. that. No. Nope. Well, maybe that'll have to come to the Saturday say, Night Colin, Every something. time Colin hears a no, <clears throat> it goes up the list. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> um, so she's in it. Is, uh, is she the main character? No, she's not even top build. Top build is... Roddy McDowell, right? No. No? Donovan. Oh. Donovan Leach? Donovan Leach, Jr. Jr. Because his dad is the singer Donovan. Oh. From the 60s, Season oh. of the Witch, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yellow. Yep, yep, and yep. yep. Pretty Dirty oh. Man. Yeah. Nepotism. Strawberry yeah. Superman or something like Whatever the. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good to know. So he's Jr. Nepotism and, knows no bounds in Hollywood, man. <laughs> well, I want to say, well, I mean, when he set out on his own to become an actor and he had to cut his teeth on cutting class, but we have put him on oh, the wow. Saturday Night Freak have Show. Have we? Wall of Fame. Yes. The what? Blob. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who is he in The Blob? This the, movie. He's Paul, the he's boyfriend Paul, earlier the, on who gets it in the it? police. <laughs> I'll fuck them. We did an episode on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. And and you think 30, he's going to be the main character oh, of The Blob? Okay. And it turns that's right. Out he that's right. He's eaten in the police station or the yeah, doctor's gotcha. office, whatever it is. And he was also a dancer in Breaking 2. What? <laughs> oh, my God. I had no idea. Wait, was he one of the cowboys? Weren't there cowboys in that one? Wasn't that the cowboy one? So that's probably his first, uh, I don't remember. Oh my uh, God, he's been in a canon movie. That's amazing. That's probably like his first role, right? 1984, he was in that before. Yeah, the gay cowboy musical. (laughs) You remember that, right? (laughs) Isn't that the one where they try to save the- the, uh, Saving the community center, yeah. 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 (laughs) What's the one where they're- I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe that's just the end of Breaking. I think that's just the end of Breaking. Don't they have to audition, but the one guy- they are doing a cowboy musical at one point. And and they it's Donovan Leach. Maybe it is. If you if it is that you have a much better memory, <laughs> I, was like, I don't remember a cowboy musical like, in any. Oh, shit, I remember that. At the guy. very end, there's the judges, and then the judges are like, mm, I don't know if I like this. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't a, and they're just like, oh yeah, was there wasn't a cowboy music, <laughs> but there was one before. I'll look this up later. I swear right. to God, there was a cowboy <laughs> musical. One, the one dude who was teaching. <laughs> what's her name? I promise you. <laughs> you talking about her like dance instructor? Yeah. <laughs> Where does the cowboy enter this? At the very, just at the very end, like it's his competing thing against their competing thing, and it's like cowboys. I promise. We watched a very different movie. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long time ago. Oh I can't. Was Back like to five years ago. Confirm yeah. or deny? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, there's a lot of people actually in this movie that you may recognize. The aforementioned Roddy McDowell. Yes. Yeah. 
Uh, mo- moonlighting is it just a perv for a little while. Like, <laughs> yeah. A- yeah, predatory staff at the school, like yeah. all of like them are. Everyone, yeah, everyone on this fucking faculty is a sexual predator. Yeah, it's like every single one exclusively hire off of the right. sex offender registry. Yeah, yeah. this is a thing, uh, yeah. like a very weird it's, vibe that the it, movie has. Right, maybe they thought they were going for like everyone's creepy, but no one notices in that. In that kind of way, you know what I mean? Where I thought like, they were just trying going... to make everyone a red herring. Like, everyone's I mean, a pervert, so it could be anyone. Yeah. I mean, just like, we'll just make say, them all perverts. they're all, um, um, you know, like, I don't know, like every time they see Jill Scholl and all the male faculty is like, oh, you pretty girl, what are you doing out in the hall? No, but they go out of the way. Like, the art teacher makes her bend over, the principal makes her bend over. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. just, it's sexual harassment yeah. nonstop. Yeah, stop. yeah. By virtually, like you said, every yeah. single male faculty. Why don't you come yep. to my office for a little surprise? Yeah, it's yeah. weird. It's, it's fucking weird. But I, I was like, because the way he plays it, a lot of the stuff that Roddy McDowell does in this movie is like, you know, you can tell, at least I thought, you know, it's like he's just cashing a paycheck and trying to put like a spin on it that's right. goofy. Because what was the principal's name? I don't remember. Or not the principal. Yeah. The vice Mrs. principal. Mrs. Mrs. Knocked. Knocked. Oh. Yeah, the vice principal. Knocked. Was, was no- <laughs> knocked. 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 Yeah. Okay, with a name like that, it's a comedy, right? Right. This is like <laughs> Frau Blucher. Uh, <laughs> what happened Knocked. to principal, uh, principal Knocked? And they say it a lot. Yeah, yeah. with dead pan, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, also in this movie is uh, Brenda James. Brenda James plays uh, Jill Sholin's friend. Is she the redhead? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And you would recognize her from two other movies that we have done oh. on this podcast. Well, she her <gasps> on the Saturday Night wow. Show Wall of Fame. Has she been topless in something? I think in... I'm back in what happened? <laughs> I'm trying to think because she was in Stone Cold. Who are we talking oh, about? Oh, who was she in Stone Cold? Oh, yeah. Was she like the just Natasha like Leone of, this, or something? Yeah. of this movie? Yeah. She was the one who was uh, getting together with a guy who was trying to like leave the uh, yep. the yeah. squirrely guy. Yep. Yeah. Um, she was also, and this, when I, once I say this, she'll be like, oh, yeah, she was in Slither because she was the girl who uh, uh, Grant Grant uh, pumps full of. Oh, yep, uh, yep, yep. <laughs> and it ends huh. up a big giant balloon oh, in the I'm barn. Oh, I'm so fucking hungry, Bill. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That was her. Okay. okay. Yep, yep. Okay. Yep, so she's in this. We've also inducted one other performer from this movie. Shut in up. Roddy McDowell. The Saturday wow. Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. Oh, this is all thanks to MF Mad. Yeah. The keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. Uh, Norman Alden, who you may not recognize his name, but is he was the... gym the, teacher? No. The gym teacher... <laughs> is Robert Ginty, and he, of course, you will remember from the Charles Band 3D movie Parasite with Demi Moore. Uh, we, haven't, we haven't watched it. We haven't okay. watched it. But no, uh, Norman Alden uh, was the police inspector in this, but he was also the, I think, the short order cook in Back to the Future. Wow. At the diner. Okay. All right. And he tries to order a tab from. I believe you. Oh, yeah. Right? And he was the foreman in They Live. Nice. Oh, okay. You know. All right. Ma'am. Can't give you a tab unless you order something. Yes. Yeah, that's got it. <laughs> okay. He had less hair mm-hmm. uh, in that movie than he did in this one. Yeah. Even though this one was shot later. Um. <laughs> Which makes you wonder. Okay. <laughs> Wasn't he wearing a hat in Back to the Future? Damn, you might be right. Yeah. Okay. So that's me. <laughs> All right. So this movie. Brent is screaming at us right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um. Seems like. Was there somebody else in the cast? Okay. No. Uh, well, all right. So what is this movie about? I guess. Uh. Yeah, what's this movie about? <laughs> um, we need to watch a paper boy go on his whole route. Yeah, what they have to do? It's anything? crucial. It's crucial <laughs> because we might need to see the headline in the newspaper at some point. Okay, mm-hmm. and the headline True. is uh something about a boy, boy. who killed father released yep. from yeah, institution. From institution. Yep. Dun, yep. Dun. yep. Classic. Yeah. Classic okay. slasher setup. There's always institution release involved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so now we're like, well, who was released from the institution? And then we have to... Okay, so first of all, right? So Martin Mull plays the father... Oh, yeah. This is of important. Jill Sholin. Yep. And he is a district attorney. 
Mm -hmm. she tells us in dialogue. I always mm -hmm. love it when characters are like, you're not only the district attorney, but you're also blah, blah, blah. No, she, but didn't she say not, you're not only the best dad, but you're the best district <laughs> yeah, attorney. Yeah, yeah. It was the way she delivered that Solid. information. Oh my God. <laughs> and he's going on a Solid. hunting trip. And so he leaves her with three rules. Those, uh, I know I remember one of them was uh, no cutting class. And we're like, ha ha. Yep. There it is. Yep. Yeah. Uh, then he leaves on a hunting trip. He ventures up North into he's gotta the get wild. a mallard. That's right. This man has never been hunting before. No, no that's no. the idea. I he's think bad he's at going it. by it, himself. It he's got his own arc in this. Yes. Yeah. So from, well, well, we were like, what is Martin Mull doing in this? And why are we going with him right. at the very right. beginning of the movie? Why is the movie f focusing on him? Mm hmm. And so he And goes, why didn't it stay with him? <laughs> I want to know. Now he's the spice. He's the thing you got to go back to. I want like, that whole journey, what? though. Well, he's out in the... It's like 127 hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It really is. Well, we, I guess we didn't know that. Like, I no, thought, no, okay, because yeah. it was a... With, yeah, because he could have been just the opening kill. Yeah, right. Because it was a been with it. Martin thought he was. credit. <laughs> right. And, you know, and I bet they did the shot of the scene. They're like, you know what? You know what we could do? The original Drew Barrymore. <laughs> Yep. We could just have you keep going through this. Yep. This entire movie. Uh-huh. Because he is day. shot with a bow and arrow. In yeah. the chest. Yeah. Pro yeah. yeah. Above like, the heart. I like to think the writer killed him in the beginning and the director was like, you know what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. We can you work know what we're going to do? do. Yeah. <laughs> I got a better idea. <laughs> and still, he probably only had to shoot one day. Oh, yeah. Probably. You, you can probably fall down this yeah. mountain a little bit. But yep. Yeah. 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 Yep. So he's he's dead, we think. And we're like, oh, there goes Martin Mull out of the movie. Then we're introduced to Brad Pitt, Daredevil, extraordinary, driving yeah. his He's a real car. Zach Morris. Real Zach Morris. Real <laughs> Zach Morris. <laughs> About him the fashion, yeah. the hair, the it car, really the attitude, the, the I'm going to hit stuff on my way out of the room because yeah. I'm mad. The, I'm going to pressure my girlfriend. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he's giving it like uh, a, a lot of work. and the, Well, a lot of physical work, <laughs> yeah, I guess, right? Yeah, a lot right? of physical work, yeah. That's how we describe the his performance. The difference being if Kelly Kapowski wanted his ring, he'd be off in a second. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Well, we're introduced to him careening down a uh, road where mm -hmm. he almost hits a kid out in the street. Yep. And, tricycle. And, yeah, tricycle. Right, has to hit the brakes at the last minute. This is important. Mm -hmm. This is all set up. This is what we're doing. Yeah. Chekhov's brakes, right? Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> uh, And so we're like, well, an irresponsible guy. And then he goes to school. Okay. And at school, we are also introduced to Donovan Leach, mm -hmm. right? Brian. Who we have dubbed. <laughs> yeah. The Lurker. <laughs> the Lurker. He is the Just best re, Lurker. You know, this movie has a great title, but The Lurker would also be a great you title are. for this movie. You got some things to learn. <laughs> from Brian. Yeah. I mean, has cinematic lurking ever been so good? I don't think so. I don't so. think so. If you're, but if you're intentionally doing a comedy, this is the way that you undercut all tension in a yes. scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Because there's no way. Like, they knew. Because, okay, so, for instance... For instance. In one scene, uh, her doorbell rings, and so she opens the door, and across the street at the neighbor's house, he's hiding in the bushes. But he's, like, he's like, he's only hiding. Like, but he, like, like, scoots out yeah. slowly from the bushes. By hiding, there's, like... A quarter of him that's hidden by the bush. Yeah, it's a very yeah. thin and bush. It, right, and it's, it's a thin, like, he gets behind it, I guess to see you. Yeah. Like, it's October, there's no leaves on the yeah. bush. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not even the best one, Kyle. No, no, no. that's not even the best, the best one. We thought that was the best one, and it just kept upping itself. It's like, it's, like the, no, the best one is they end up in like, an office. One, and of, a, one of my favorite things when we do movies is when we're all shouting at the screen for something to happen <laughs> and, and then it, it actually it happens. happens. Yeah. yeah. This was one of those best. Moments. This was one of the best. Because usually we're right in the wrong way. We're usually yeah. like calling it and we're like, well, that's going to be disappointing and predictable. Yeah. And then they end up doing the disappointing <laughs> and predictable thing. This movie pleasantly surprised. Yeah. yeah this movie got some applause. Yeah. <laughs> Sheared, like, thank really. God. It was great. <laughs> oh my God. Cause they were in an office at one point and they're going through files and stuff like yeah. that. And there's a, a, a water, water cooler, cooler <laughs> in the corner and we just get a shot of it at one point. That and it's just it, bubbling. And it just bubbles up and yeah. it's like, and all I was just like, Oh, please come up and be in there. So like, just, Please, goofing. Yeah. I'm just like, just be, behind the water please cooler. Please be in the water cooler <laughs> yeah. somehow. And then they go back to them, and the next shot is him behind the water cooler, just lurking and looking <laughs> yeah. at people. Yeah, just like, looking through big, the water cooler yeah, at is, them. So his head's like magnified. Yeah. Right. Oh, it's beautiful. It is a cheer out loud moment, <laughs> I think, yeah. at this point in the movie. Yes. Yeah. And it's yeah. also like, if you didn't know before what this movie was 
where it was going or what it was saying or what trying to do, mm-hmm. this gives you a pretty clear. The sc- you hear the scales tip in that you're moment. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're oh, like, yeah. Okay. You're yeah. like, yes. Yeah. And we yeah. should say more. that we should describe what this guy looks like because his look makes it even more like you know comedic and creepy. You yeah. know Mike Barnes from Karate Kid Part Three. Yeah. He looks like a skinnier <laughs> version of that guy, but with the same like eyes that could. Yeah, he's got he's got like googly crazy eyes, and he has severe eyebrows, and he has kind of like an overbite. Yeah, a little and, spiky hair, a little bit. Yep, yeah. and he's wearing like a suit that's kind of like ill fitting and too big for him. Yep. So it's very Frankenstein. He's, he's like if jo- he's like if John Cryer played Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yep. yes, yes. yep. yeah, and like had the big weird shoulder pads in yeah. it, and kind of hunches over, and like, and he's th- okay. <laughs> I'm not weird. As <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 Sh- Sean, grabbing snakes and shit. Sh- Sean and I unearthed a lot of um, childhood issues and kind of dealt with them with this while we were watching, yeah. right? Because we were talking about there's always that weird kid in school, right? Yeah. And this kid is the weird kid and he keeps doing weird stuff. And then, like you said, Sean turns it around at everybody else and being like, no one will accept me. Right. Why well, does no but- one believe I'm not better? Yeah. <laughs> He's very self aware, though. <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, like, I'm yeah. weird and yeah. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, okay, at least you know you're weird. So right. he is the kid. Who was let out of the institution? Yep, right, yes. for right, killing his father, yeah. and he has a pa- past relationship with Brad Pitt. Right. He's yes. like, we used to be friends, but now we're not. Brad we used to Pitt's fix cars him- together. Yep. yep, I used to love being under this car with you. Yeah. Very homoerotic. Yep. Remember, yep. You remember that thing yep. you taught me? Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Yeah. I'll never you remember forget when that. we took that part out and then we put it back. <laughs> and I never told anybody about that. Yep. Yeah. And then someone was murdered. Yep. Yeah. And was my father. Yep. And because, well, okay, we don't know that yet, but I guess finally, <laughs> we, we, we find out that uh, how his father died was that the brakes were cut on his car. Mm-hmm. So he apparently cut the brakes on his dad's car. Or did he? Mm-hmm. Or did somebody else do it? And where did he learn to cut brakes on a car? From a friend. <laughs> Who he never gave up in court. You don't give up friends. You don't give up friends. Yep. No, this is in the court paperwork. I mean, I appreciate that he's no snitch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's right. respect. Honestly, yeah. yeah. mad You're respect. Right. <laughs> Everyone had their opportunity to like do the right thing in this movie. Yep. And he's the only one who did. <laughs> yeah. Technically, yeah. 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 he's yeah. literally the only one yeah. who did. So the so you think like you know because he covered for Brad Pitt they'd be best buds, but mm. no, the problem Brad Pitt is makes it clear. He's like, look, I know we used to be friends, but. It's not going to happen again. <laughs> well, that's because Brad Pitt is mm-hmm. dating Jill Sholin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think they dated in real life uh, during the. They did. The, they yep. got engaged for yeah. a while. Oh, even. oh wow. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And then. Uh, I need to write a tell all book. I want to know everything I know. about yeah. her life. She's been on some, you know, you watch the popcorn documentaries. Mm-hmm. She talks mm-hmm. a little bit. Anyway, uh, she has good things to, you know, to say. Mm-hmm. Um, but Ryan. Donovan Leach. Brian. Brian. Brian also <laughs> likes uh, Jill Scholl. Yes. Yeah. This is what the primary conflict is between the right. two Did guys. They classic Did they love date triangle? before at all? Maybe? Were they I involved? didn't get that impression. It, it was like nice to him, but I, don't, but I don't think it's out of like pity or just like, you know, welcome back and all that stuff. I mean, you'd be nice Maybe to your boyfriend's friends. friend, right? You I know, so. like, yeah, but, but I'm just wondering if they were like dating before, but mm-hmm. he got sent away. So maybe Brad Pitt took the girlfriend because this movie makes it very obvious that she likes him. Yeah. yeah. Right. She's very right. nice to him. Yeah. But I mean, like, it seems like she likes him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, because even at one point, the friend's like, she likes you, too. Yeah. And she's like, not mad. She's like, oh. So I think the friend is trying to get her away from Brad Pitt. Maybe? Yeah, who's very right. who's controlling? At right. The very yeah. beginning of the He's movie, like, get in the car. But like even when gonna... she sees him stalking her, she's just like, oh, <laughs> like, she doesn't care. <laughs> Brad Pitt's like the worst student, the worst person. He's the worst. Yeah, he's the worst. <laughs> he's the worst at everything. Yeah, just you know what? Though? Constantly he's, failing. One of those guys who's just like, just get just an ounce of effort. You yes. could, you could float through the <laughs> shit. Just bring your goddamn gym clothes. <laughs> not, uh. not saying I don't agree with that because I do. He's mm. a terrible student. But considering the staff and faculty at this fucking high school, I don't blame him. There's a lot yeah. of dialogue that's yeah. like, fuck you. No, <laughs> fuck you. You can't talk to a student that way. Fuck you. Yeah. Like, you know. Back All the forth. adults in this are terrible. The adults are not good. And like, <laughs> There's several parts in this. The dialogue, if you told me that it was uh, Judd Nelson from Breakfast Club, I would <laughs> yeah. believe you. Yeah. I would believe Maybe you. they were going for that vibe. It, it I think they like were. It. It Especially like it. the way he would like have to hit something on his way out of the room every time, too. Yeah. That's a very Judd <laughs> yeah. thing, yeah. There were yeah. several moments I'm like, this is like shot for shot yeah. from Breakfast mm-hmm. Club. Mm-hmm. Donovan Leach gets called into the principal's office at some point. She's like, I bet you think that 
you know, like you know, teachers are just here to create problems in your life but we're actually trying to mold you and pass some of our like knowledge on to you so that we can live forever (laughs) yeah it wasn't it wasn't even like we want to teach you we want you you to like grow and prosper no it was like we we want to live on and it's going to be through you like and he's like, I'd rather uh, I think everybody eat has a bag of dicks or something like that. I would rather suck donkey dick on his head. And she's like, you're expelled. Mm. Uh, also, respect for saying that to the fact yeah. that he's faced at the school. <laughs> you know president, what? Maybe I'm on his side. <laughs> I know. Well, that was Nancy yeah. Fish, too, because she was in uh, Exorcist 3, mm. since we're on an yes. Exorcist kick, right? Um, so anyway, there is a killer on the prowl, because mm. we know that Martin Mull has been shot and killed. <laughs> At the beginning of this movie. Yep. He's dead, dead in the swamp, waiting for some jogger to discover his body. Yep. <laughs> well, good news. There's a science field trip coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who's the second victim? Oh, the art teacher. Okay. Why the did kiln. the art teacher oh, yeah, the kiln. get thrown in the kiln? Um, Everybody's trying to be because, all handsy with the. Yeah, because he was making her bend over and shit. Yeah, because oh, yeah, she's that, a model in art class. Like, we're like, oh, okay, gonna be yeah, like yeah. We got to talk about this. Illegality <laughs> and moral <laughs> bankruptcy of having a high yeah. school student. Brad Pitt's like, I don't want you doing this. She's like, I mean, and then he's like, Come on. Come on into the class. But it seems like he's just being a controlling boyfriend in the, at this moment. Until it does. Until it's revealed what more. it is. Yeah, and yeah. Like, oh, I agree with Brad Pitt yeah, in exactly. this moment. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so she's modeling for a life drawing class. And just in like a leotard. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, this is high school. They've told us several times it's mm-hmm. high school and minor student is modeling in a leotard in front of her other minor classmates. Not okay. and this is, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Not the okay. only time I've ever done life drawing was in college. Like, yeah. Yeah. never done it in high school. Yeah, I didn't mm-hmm. do it in high and school. even but still, the, California. You know, but even still, the models there. weren't students. They were people that <laughs> right, were people paid to be in. models. Yeah. 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 But that's turns a requirement out. of the class. All right. Well, now I'm to pick who's going to be the new model. <laughs> <But> like, <laughs> you know how much you hate yourself in high school? Now oh. everyone in your class has to look at you and draw you for that, two what hours. A, what I a actually, horrible Torture. Thing. Actual actually kill torture. Myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right there, drop that class right, so this. quickly. Yeah. yeah. But it turns out the lurker is here. The lurker. <laughs> this is what, the, Some of the best. This lurking. might be the second best. This is the second yeah, best maybe. lurking. Yeah. He comes up behind the, the of the, the Venus the de Milo. Yeah. The, yeah. the Venus bus. De Milo. Yeah. And he, he he comes up and he knocks it over and of course he grabs it by the boobs and yeah. it's falling over like you would. Yeah, it's a very sitcom-y moment. It, yeah. it really is, yes. Yeah. And then it's he ends great. up being drawn in, since he's in the class, he begins, he's drawn in to be the model as well. And so yeah. He's got an apple. They're doing sexy it. apple holding. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, reaching for apples. They're like, are they going to kiss? They're staring into each other's mm-hmm. eyes. It's very tense. Yep. Very tense. Yep. And it cuts away. It cuts yep. away. Because um, Brad Pitt is like, Spending some time at Jill Sholin's house, but I get the impression that they have never gone all the way. She at some point says, "Once your grade average comes up, uh, to, <laughs> shuts him down." Yeah, uh, Once only, when you're, up. only when you're It's improved with her voice, yep. with yep. her husky voice. Yeah, but then, uh, so in spite of her, then Brad Pitt puts on her dad's clothes. <laughs> yeah, this is instance her dad's one. Suit. Of yeah, listener, you're more as confused as you are. <laughs> yep. Putting on her dad's clothes and it's very weird. And like, I, yep. he's uh, got more room than your dad does. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he <laughs> he li- he's laying in her her bed or her parents' bed. Her parents', her parents bed. bed. Yeah, never her do this. Her parents' bed in her dad's suit, talking about how his dad's clothes are too big for him, but he's bigger where it counts. He's literally saying, "My dick is bigger than your dad's." To his girlfriend, I, like, yeah. and expecting her this to like put her in the mood, like, and be it's like, "Okay, dude, that's your issue." <laughs> yep, yep, yeah. yep. You're not gonna fuck it out uh-uh. through me. So like, everyone's a psycho in this one. Yep. One of them decided to kill people. Yep, exactly. Red herrings everywhere. <laughs> red herrings. It's, it's red herrings everywhere. Well, I mean, we're saying it's a slasher movie, and I guess there are murders mm-hmm. yeah. that, that yes. happen. Oh, yeah. The, our dude gets in a kiln. Yep. Yes. We mentioned how he gets killed, but he's taking stuff out of the kiln. And he gets yeah, I would have liked a little more... Melting? Yeah. Something. Yeah, I, I wanted to see melting. his skin melt off his skull. That's right. what I wanted just to a, see. Just a one shot of uh, a high-pitched scream while he's on, actually on yeah. fire. Yeah, and then the, it the, is like, the black uh, smoke coming out of the... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've we've elected a new art teacher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As it floats away. But there's like an absence of like gore murders in this movie yeah like a complete absence there's one point i think somebody gets their throat cut and maybe yeah, but it's, yeah. not, it's like not a thing. savini thing it's just no. one of them, uh knives with the blood yeah right. two behind, in the, it. behind the thing yeah, yeah right yeah so the uh the teacher the art teacher gets killed and then um is this when um what's her name in the bleachers yeah, yeah. he's off yep. her underwear oh yeah decides to wow the crowd this 
<laughs> the school of sex crimes is what this it's, like it should move. This should place be should be investigated yeah. <laughs> for <laughs> teachers and students. Yeah. Everyone is just wrong in this. Mm-hmm. Right. It's enjoyable. It was, but it yeah. was weird that we were like in the, because you're getting that locker room scene. You know, yeah. all the yeah. girls are in the locker room uh, because uh, Roddy McDowell has called Jill Sholin aside and like, like, come to my office. Why? It's a surprise. Yeah. I mean, it's very yes. creepy. Oh, this is why. And Roddy McDowell sure. has this weird, really weird thing where he, he's always on the microphone, like the PA yeah. system, and he has a sock on he it. He sniffs so it. Yeah. He pulls it off and sniffs it because that's an it's actor's like a pink choice. Sock. It's, it's like, weird. God, I love radio. Yeah, yeah, because uh, it's a comedy, and uh, so she's on the the cheer squad because yeah. he bought the uniform for her or whatever. Give her the uniform. Yeah, he apparently he elects the cheer squad. Yeah, why, why wouldn't you? So we're in the and locker put, room. He, what is the criteria? He puts, he puts her uniform on the floor. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Go so over there and the pick floor. it up. Oh yeah, because that was kind of. Awful. Yeah, it was, was kind of awful. It, it was get a good look, Costanza, but Even like six from like, times. From a filmmaker point of view, you're like, okay, so she's bending over and you can see her underwear like under the skirt. Yeah, there's like, no like nothing left in the imagination. No, at that point, and we see it you, several times. Right, yeah. yeah. It's just like you could give, do a... Give this girl a fucking break, would you? Yeah. Yeah. Right, we could do a shot where we just go off his face. We get that, but right. we get more... Well, I thought there was going to be like boob shots in the locker room. Right, right. Sure. And there, I'm sure but, there was because it well, felt like that was, was that cut. weird insert shot. That, yeah, but that's that not came, later. Yeah, like yeah. a half hour later. It yeah. felt like that came from this scene. Yeah, but I'm just like, there was a lot more nudity. Or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, what is this rated? Is this R? It's R, yeah. Mm. But then they, so they go out to the they game. They fuck a lot. And this is where uh, Brad Pitt basketball, uh, you know, did not expect a basketball scene in this movie. No. Basketball savant. Yeah, because his dad has arranged to bring like uh, the college recruiter there to witness mm-hmm. the classic. game. Classic. Ca- classic Saved by the Bell setup. <laughs> it is. The college recruiter is coming. You have to be here. And then some injury. Zach had an injury. Lisa had a fashion malfunction. They've done this for like every character yeah. where the college recruiter is coming. Yeah. And just for the record... Recruiters don't base everything on one game. Yeah, they don't. Yeah. yeah. They look at stats. Yeah. They'd be bad recruiters. Yeah. 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 They don't look at one game. Well, what, but see, that's the thing that I was like, so they, they don't establish, I guess for me, like why usually it's like, you know, somebody, somebody, well, like in Butcher Baker, Nightmare Maker, you, you give the kid the, the dosed milk before he goes to the, the game or whatever. Uh, yeah. Fucks it up. But in this one, Brad Pitt. His temper. Starts, is that what it was? His temper will fuck him up on his own. Yeah, that's what psych- happened. He psyched himself Because he's a psycho. Okay. So he gets into a fight with like a kid on the. On okay, the but pressure the kid, gets okay, to him. Okay. The kid did elbow him in the face. Yeah. The kid elbowed him in the face. But this fight went on for a long time. It, it did, reminded it me of uh, Dexter New Blood. Yeah. Uh, there was a scene yeah, yeah. similar to that. Um, But. He, yeah, he wrestles this kid and finally like gets separated and then what gets kicked out and that's the end of that, yeah, right? He gets yeah, kicked out of the game. He gets kicked yeah. out. And right after that, there was a murder. There's two, two murders. murders. Yes. The, the bleacher murder. Yes, yeah. after the cheerleading oh, expedition. Cheerleader takes her panties off because their cheers aren't quote unquote that good. <laughs> right. So the team's gonna, not that good. The team's right, not that right. good. Yeah. So they yeah. need to amp up the crowd somehow, yeah. which I'm and all for, but so. I think it goes without saying. But <laughs> yeah, she uh, then. Her boyfriend has been under the bleachers going around, uh, supposedly collecting change and looking up girls' skirts. Sure. And then she goes underneath because she thinks that she's being pulled down by him, or Mm -hmm. he is, but he gets murdered with a knife to the neck, and then she's just, "Uh, we don't really see how she gets murdered. Yeah, they don't hear her screams. Yeah, you don't see her get murdered. It's right at the end of the the buzzer when the team wins. Everyone's cheering and everything, so no one And the band's playing. I love the band playing in the gym, too. And the 55-year-old woman in the front is playing a... (laughs) Fucking flute or something. Yeah, yeah, and on the off chance that is a eighteen year old person, I'd love to see what they look like now. <laughs> I don't know if they're still just around. out of curiosity. No offense, but it does Miss, seem like there's a missed, there's a missed opportunity there in as far as how the murder is ex- executed. Right? I think so. Uh, if nothing else, because it should have been the killer pulling her down or something. I mean, it's played that way. And then it turns out it's the you know her boyfriend. So both of them are out of the movie, mm-hmm. and we're like, okay. Who's the killer? Yeah, well, she got smushed. There's a janitor. There is a janitor. Mm-hmm. The be- one of the best the red herrings <laughs> in this movie. Yeah, because he's yeah. Uh, out there having Vietnam flashbacks. Yeah, yeah he, he is. is. Yeah, he is. 
He comes across a pool of blood at some point, which he sniffs. He, he puts yeah. it on a mop. Uh, pulls oh, yeah, it he's off. blood with a bunch of popcorn. Yeah, in he's it. mopping up where they were under the bleachers and they yeah. got murdered. Yeah. yeah, apparently not reporting it to the police, no. just mopping it and up. It's a, yeah, it's a weird cut to where it's just a mop and a pool of blood and popcorn. Yeah, and it's just like it's pretty gross. He's got to smell it. I'm like, it seems pretty obvious, my friend. Yeah, right. I don't think you have to smell that because God knows what that mop smells. It looks still, horrible. Isn't he dressed in like uh, like uh, he's still got like his, his I think he's got. It's not fatigues, but he's got like that dark green like yeah it's like I'm it's like he there. took the janitor like coveralls and cut the sleeves off yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. or he came right out of the military and just ripped the sleeves off yeah. his uniform and just like i'm good to go mm-hmm. but he is what is art equal everyone Oh, dirt. 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 As yeah. he, like he's getting ready for battle, going into the art room. It's like these motherfuckers are dirty. I'm going in. But the way he says that, it's like it activates something. <laughs> it's like art. Where there's art, there's Where dirt. There's, yeah. And like he's just like so like right. he's about to go into battle. No, yeah. Everyone's like, yeah. getting psyched up. Every person in this movie's unhinged. Yeah. yeah. Right. Everyone, Everyone is yeah. a psycho. Everyone. Yep. Yes. But, but I think that's what, for red herrings. You know, sure, like, but yeah. it, but it also just makes me think like the, the like, she's, where is this town? Right. Jesus. Well, Jill's going through it like la 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 yeah. la la la. <laughs> and everyone around her is a psycho, which is the feeling of, but I like that. Yeah. It's just yeah, like yeah. this is insanity. Yeah, yeah. She's just like I just just want to do my schoolwork. Right. Yeah. I've got a test tomorrow. Stab, stab, stab. It, it, it feels like serial mom should be happening in this a same little, town. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like, yeah. like it's yeah. in the, the next town over. Yeah. Oi. I feel like serial mom and election are all happening yeah. in this town. Ooh, I like it. Yeah. But it's, it's kind of describing the tone of this, right? Yeah. It's mean, kind of how this plays out. Yeah. Um, there's also a scene where the kids sneak into the aforementioned office where the lurker is. Somebody's always lurking. Somebody's always, always watching. Somebody. Somebody's watching <laughs> and uh, if, Roddy if not- McDowell watching. Jill oh, there's watches. like a lurker inception. The lurker yeah. will be being right. lurked by then, somebody else. Yeah. One shot yeah. where she leaves a gym where Brian is in the back lurking and then the custodian just walks in front of the camera yes, and, and him looks right to also camera. lurk. Yeah. Yes. It's wonderful. Yeah. It's so a lot of lurkers. Lurking. lurking. <laughs> it's so good. Lurkers. Not even just uh, in the background, just obvious lurking. Yeah. Um, but they uh, get the, uh, they sneak into the school in order to uh, look through the records and yes. get the records of Brian. uh, Brian's Brian, yeah. uh, history mm-hmm. and find out that he w- went through an electroshock therapy at 75 watts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then they end up like tormenting him in school, even though he's smart. Right? Was, he's the guy who knows the answers to all the questions. He knows poetry. And, and how did they, how <laughs> did they make fun problems. of him in the class? How did Natasha Leon make fun of him in the class? She stands up and goes, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And then the whole class does. <laughs> the whole class you know, like, Everybody does it. knows because they, they made copies of this report and distributed yeah. it to everybody. It's so weird, but. It's real weird. It's so fun. It's, kids are so fucking kids mean. Kids are so <laughs> fucking <laughs> mean. Kids are, the, kids are psychos until they. Um, develop a conscious yeah. hopefully later on so I'm not surprised <laughs> but yeah. like That's man true. starting to watch this movie I was kind of like oh it's back to school season I feel a little nostalgic for school and do then you that, now that lasted like five minutes and I was like you know what like, I'm oh, so fucking glad I don't school I'm so glad school's not my problem anymore oh my god yeah <laughs> Oh, Gotta wait Jesus until the Christ. empathy kicks in. Yeah. Yeah. in their twenties yeah. or right. something like that. Right? that Hopefully, it, you get that though, before like, murder. When you grow up, you're like, "Oh man, I wish I could go back." And they're like, "No, no, I no, don't. No, no, I don't know. I, I've I never once wished no, to go back. Never have no, I once no, wished to go back. No, no I don't fuck get that. no. People who say that peaked in high school. They're like, yeah. yeah uh, if anybody tells you that, they peaked in high school. I almost said, I almost said Ted Bundy. It's not. It's Al Bundy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They think Maybe Ted Bundy too. I don't know. Yeah. But it's knowing what you know now. Would you go back? Is that usually right. the qualifier on the uh, the question? Of, I, still, I think so most people are just like, yeah, I go, I kick ass in kickball now. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. mostly that mentality. I still wouldn't go back. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. I'd go back for the kickball. I'm just like kickball and its faces. You just want to see or get on the football yeah, field it. and just be like stiff arming yeah. kids and going for touchdowns. <laughs> this is what Billy Madison should have been. I was, was like, it? I don't remember. So I would dominate eighth grade. That's but you're that's thinking as an adult, or like you're an adult in an eighth grade. Or, you are uh, like body? afraid of teenagers as an adult. I am because oh, they I'm have terrified. all the power. That's why I want to be in the football <laughs> field, knocking them over. Oh, if I see teenagers in public, I'm like, oh my god, don't don't make eye contact. Like don't don't like disturb them at all because like yeah. if we get into a situation where there's a back and forth, I don't have any power. They're I just don't children. Wanna, I just I don't want to talk to them. Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. Like. But and like, you can't punch them technically. Yes, you can't do it. That they <laughs> right. have all the power, and yes. they know it, and that's the problem. Right. They can they get in your it. face and do yes. shit, and, and you're you the have adult. To be the adult, exactly. And they can yeah. be the I was most. Thinking about that yeah. while we that's were That's why I'm afraid movie. of them. But all it takes is like 
one or like two adults to be on the same side yeah. you can like suppress yeah. the the crazy teenager yes, but, but it seems but, like it's but, but them when, against you but Callan, think about this next time you're out in public and you see like a group of teenagers you're gonna feel yeah. the same way i do you're gonna be like oh my god I'm gonna just go don't get draw my, their my attention Saturday night freak show posse to back me up <laughs> No, I'm afraid of like, that. Yeah, you little punks. Yeah, um, and that's okay. about all you can do is yeah, you Colin little punks. Colin calls me. It's like, Sean, I saw a bunch of te- teenagers on my uh, my ring doorbell. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go fuck them up. You want to come over? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's how you do it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, okay. But then you're an See? adult assaulting children. This is the problem. That is the unfortunate. Like, yeah. but, you do that, but the office. officer, they were on my lawn. Yeah. So oh you do that. man, um, right. we have all become as unhinged yes. as the people in this movie. <laughs> so I think it was inevitable at this point. I'm surprised took this long there's a field trip that takes place in this movie oh yeah, yeah the science field trip yeah uh where it is discovered that's right listener i know you weren't expecting this but martin mole is still alive <laughs> yes <laughs> because they walk on him in oh, the, yeah. Yeah. yes they do yep, they, they literally w- step on him and like resuscitate him and this starts <laughs> a that's actually what happened yeah that's yes. like literally what happened yeah, he was dead for, and for the rest of the movie we are interrupted by scenes of martin mole uh crawling journey back through the mud there's a He's scene homeward bound <laughs> where so at some point the principal is murdered by vice principal the vice principal yeah. Yeah. who yep. is suspended uh uh brian, brian mm-hmm. yeah. is murdered on a copy machine and so like thousands yeah. of copies of oh her face God. pressed up against the glass yep. uh are printed these are distributed amongst the parents who hold them up at a, at a, at a town hall meeting. Oh my god, also this is insane. a great scene. <laughs> the entire like town hall in this high school gym and every single person has a photocopy of her dead face, but it's a different, different. one yep. because so many copies were made. And I, who, who was the person who collected all these and handed them out to Angry I mean, Bob? You know, some kid was just like, oh, I'm going to get these. Before. Sell them for a quarter. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, Brad Pitt's dad is leading the charge. And yep. so then we cut to, there's a manhunt Right where they're going to go because uh, Donovan Leach <laughs> takes off running, right. you know, no. because uh, Brad Pitt's like, he did it. He's the killer. And so then there's a police manhunt with, uh, you know, bloodhounds and the bloodhounds find Martin Mull. <laughs> and he says, go get help, boy, in a comedy scene. And shitty Lassie does not. Do no. It. And apparently that's okay, the end okay. of that. But like, not, she's not a shitty Lassie because she's barking. Yeah. And the cops just don't come. Yeah. Uh, and right. the cops never find anything. Typically, him. they're supposed to come when the dog barks. They never find anything. And that whole subplot is dropped because Martin Mull is still crawling his way back home. So- and Brian is in a dumpster. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, he is in a dumpster and he finds one of those uh, photocopies of her face and because you just see a hand holding dumpster. it raise up from the dumpster. <laughs> this yeah. man can that. appear from anywhere. Because he's just lurking. Expert lurking lurker. In, yeah, Expert. Everywhere. Bam, he's there. Hide and seek right. champion. So you're probably wondering who the killer is in this movie. Is it Roddy McDowell as the crazy principal who's fixated on Jill Sholin Ooh. and is somehow killing all these people? Is it Brad Pitt because he actually is the crazy person and Donovan Leach took the fall for it? Is it the crazy janitor with no motive, but he's mm-hmm. just a crazy psycho But he hates person. kids. Mm-hmm. Is it Jill Sholin, which would be a surprise? Mm-hmm. Because you Why wouldn't, I guess you wouldn't, yeah, you, you wouldn't expect that one yeah. at all. Yeah. Or is it a twin? Yeah. Or is it a twin? <laughs> but it turns out, because we find out the killer's identity when the killer is uh, trapping Jill Sholin. Oh, yeah, there's a math a problem. Math, yeah, teacher. Because uh, the story problems become like a subplot, and then yeah. so basically, and it's the fucking this train leaves from New York. This train leaves from that. Boston. Yeah. It is yeah. literally that problem. This is this is this movie uh, uh, foretold Saw, right? It Where did. the killer <laughs> traps them in a classroom, and there's a story problem on the wall, and if you solve it, you either have to go through door one or door two, mm-hmm. and one of them is death. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And so the math teacher, of course, uh, doesn't solve his own problem. What, what, what does he say? He, I'm, not I'm not prepared. prepared. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you're the math teacher. Just do it. Right? We're all yelling. Right. Just like, figure it out, dude. It's not that hard. Come on. <laughs> and he's, he, he struggles under pressure. Yeah. Apparently. He's a teacher. <laughs> but he fi- eventually figures it out that uh, I think if a one does train he? leaves Chicago at 50 miles an hour, one leaves Boston at 50 miles an hour, at what time will they collide? Yeah. Is it 1 or 2 a.m.? And he's like, it's 1 a.m. It's 1. So he chooses the wrong door and is greeted by... The killer. Who is the killer? Brian. Brian. Brian Song. Did yeah. not think it was going to be it's him. It's too obvious. Yeah. 
You called everyone. You, you called, called everyone. everyone. Okay. So I have noticed this. But he did like, say it out loud, huh? You do have like that. Yeah, but it doesn't count. But doesn't I, I count. Mean, it's one of those things like I always do that. I go like, oh, it's this guy. And then as the movie goes on, you're like, well, it could be this I one. I mean, that's how that's, that's, that's what they're yeah, doing. That's how, that's how they're goes, supposed yeah. to be. It's just like, and always that first guess is usually the <laughs> right one. But OK, so he it kills turns him with an axe. He, does he is the face. killer. I was not expecting this. Why is he the killer? I mean, because he's crazy. Yeah, because he's good at it. And because his father died and he went to jail for it. and It's, it's his profession. He Brian, wants to be the best. He wants to be the best him, yeah. at it. He's mm-hmm. like, who did he compare himself to? These people that were professionals and the best. And he's like, I can do that too. Yeah, there's a long like monologue. He's, a, he's, he's like, got yeah. a monologue. I'm going to be the best the at my he, field. The more he talks, the less sense he makes. Yep. Yeah, because he started speaking gibberish at yeah. a certain point. I just didn't understand what he was saying. Right. Sorry, rhyming Yankee Doodle. Yeah, I, yeah. Was, was it? I def- I yeah, yeah, like this point, I'm just like, ah. <laughs> he really is crazy. He's just the weird kid being weird again. He, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dragging an axe down yes. the lockers. Yes. I'm yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> but he was killing. So then you got a motive and it's like, okay, well, he killed her dad or tried to kill her dad because her dad he was him, the district attorney who, who put him away. Know, yeah. She discovers this at some point. Yeah. Uh, killed the uh, the teachers and the principal because it was like just obvious. The ones who offended him yeah. right. are the ones yeah. that he killed. Well, I mean, right. to be fair, they're all assholes. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. Of them. They were. <laughs> And then it's up to Brad Pitt to save the day. Very athletic Brad Pitt smashing through doorways with spin it's kicks. Spin kicks. <laughs> that spin awesome. kick into that the science room. That was fucking awesome, yeah. <laughs> that was great. Oh, my God. Okay, spin kick into the science room. And then we think this is going to be the big redeeming moment for Brad Pitt. Oh, yeah. We were all so psyched. And I was ready for this, too. This would have been great. So they end up in the science room and he's looking for uh, oh, yeah. he's looking for what the salt the sodium yeah the he's early, looking, early, early on in the movie we watch it, we movie. watch an entire science class right we watch an entire <laughs> science class to set up for this moment yeah. so he's like I'm looking for sodium because you turn on the water I'll throw the sodium in there he'll fucking blow up and we'll be done mm-hmm. yeah yeah he throws it and it's. I just lays there. It's just a rock. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> it's like if you would have paid attention in class, if you wouldn't have been late that day. Yeah. I'm like it would have been the ultimate redeeming thing for him. Yeah. But he truly is just a shitty student. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Threw a yeah. rock in the water and nothing yep. happened. It's, it's like a it's like a realistic portrayal of Zach Morris. He doesn't like wiggle a, his way out of it. Yeah, he actually fucks funny. up. It's yeah. I, it, it, it's such a weird thing because I wanted him to blow up, but I'm also like. Really glad he's a shitty stu. He's just a moron. Yeah, respected and the movie's didn't choice. Get it. Yeah, I, no, it, was, I, it, it went it was, good either way. It was one of those moments that like it had to set in because we're like, oh man, and then we're like, well, no, that yeah, yeah. yeah. But it yeah. did like provoke like a oh, yeah. for, it, and it I'm did. Like, okay, was that like good writing or execution? Because it got a reaction, right? Even though we were disappointed by the right. result. I still wish somebody would have got blown up by that. Yeah. Uh, the next scene, though, is pretty cool. So I'm down with right. like, Then we go know, the full Terminator. Yep. The next yeah. Scene. We go into the shop, into shop class. Yeah. Yes. Auto and shop. all the machines yep. get turned on and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's a, there's a fight scene end up in this shop class. And it's all a little too close for me. They like, all have like power tools, like hand power are, tools. They're like hitting tools, with each like other. Like machinery yeah. is spinning in the background. It's yeah. spinning. Yeah. It's flying. Mm-hmm. flying. Yeah. People are getting close to these things. There's steam valves all around. There's engines being. And yeah, every piece of machinery is turning on and running itself. Like table saws are going, yeah. drills are spinning yeah. in the air. Like, this is yeah. the most dangerous shop class in the history. It's like right. it's possessed. Well, yeah. right. This explains why every shop teacher, uh, there was always the joke, was like, hi, I'm the shop teacher. And he's got like three Dude, fingers right, and right. a handshake. Right. And they end up, uh, there's a comedy bit where Brad Pitt's like, pull his cord, you know, because they're both using power tools. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to Pick the right cord and unplugs Brad Pitt's power tool. Mm-hmm. And then um, Brad Pitt gets his head put in a vice yeah. and a drill put to his chest. Yeah. Right. So saw. Again, this yep. is like early saw stuff. Yeah. And uh, the only way out is to seduce Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Like, yeah. there, there was a scene where she was uh, going to take a. Uh, okay. I was going to say she was going to take a bath. She but was washing her hair. It was. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you girls do this? You run the bath water and then... Okay, I will say the house that I grew up in, like in high school... If I wanted to just wash my hair, that is how I had to wash oh, really? my hair. Yeah, same, yeah. because we had yep. one that was just a bathtub and no shower. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Like, I like I, what the yeah. fuck Like, if I take it? a nap and I wake up and I got bedhead, I'll just do that. I'll just stick yeah, my head I, under the faucet, mm-hmm. get it all cleaned yeah. up. And, if yeah. I was yeah. just washing my hair, I would have to do it that way. Yeah. yeah. 
I did notice that the photographer, like, that was the sexiest that Jill Sholin looked in this whole movie with her hair all wet and all that. And I'm like, but this is a really weird vibe because yeah. she's being threatened by a guy with a knife. And I'm yeah. like, I guess that's the criticism that these horror movies uh, usually get. Yeah. But, okay, so at the end of it, then. <laughs> but if uh, this entertaining. <laughs> power tool massacre oh, is going to yeah. happen. And Jill Sholin is going to seduce uh, Brian, but she's modest. Even though he was there in that scene where she was mm-hmm. naked, uh, she's like, hey, "Close your eyes, uh, so I can take my my top off." Mm. And he does. He's like, <laughs> yeah. he's like, "I didn't trust your father. Can I trust you?" Yeah. And she's <laughs> like, once again, talk comparing her to her dad and bringing her dad into weird sexual. Oh yeah, because he put on her dad's suit as well. Yes, yes right. he did. He's, he's killing people in her dad's suit as well. At this yeah, point. he's like, I yeah. found some clothes. Yeah, <laughs> and you're like, oh great. <laughs> like Jesus, we're going with this again. But he's that, wearing did... bowling shoes. Yeah, his his suit and bowling <laughs> shoes. <laughs> a colorful combination and that does make it more like frankenstein i suppose in yeah. appearance true 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 um and so jill sholin takes that opportunity to that, kill him once and for all grabs a hammer hammer mm-hmm. up in the head yep it hammer looks good I like it, does, it does look good yeah. i like how deep it went yeah well, then he gets uh, they, <laughs> you <they> child <laughs> you such a child <laughs> sorry <laughs> And he ends up getting cut that one out. I like how deep it went. It, doesn't he go on like a, a, a circular saw? Yeah. Also? Oh yeah, his back. Like, on yeah, yeah. I was hoping sparks. that it would come through his chest. That would have yeah, been good. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Been I don't cool. think the budget allowed, but that would have been good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know because you got to do the slasher bits in like in twos. They at least yeah. did the two, but a third would be the yeah coming yeah. through the front. That would have been great. Um. So thank God these two kids, Brad Pitt and Jill Schoen, <laughs> survive. Thank yeah, God. Thank God. Because, because and, the, we, well, and before that, because yeah. that relationship's healthy. And yeah. the the janitor does reappear in the movie. We thought maybe that he would save the day, but uh, he is also there. And he's like, "What are you kids doing with all this crazy stuff?" And then he makes some weird sexual comment about her. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'll weird. clean this up for put you. Another one in. Yep. I know it's, it's, it's pervasive. Weird. It's so goddamn <laughs> weird. Yeah. Um. So then, these perversely kids, pervasive. Because uh, uh, Brian, before he dies, gets off on this whole like crazy speech that Sean was telling us about, where he's like, "I had to try to fill, figure out how to kill people in the future and in the past, oh, yeah. change the course of yeah. of destiny." And so Jill Sholin's plagued by this when her and Brad Pitt get into the car later. Mm-hmm. Like, what was he talking about? And it's like, oh, well, he was crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And who comes tumbling down a hill? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they, they but they're executing this like no, pretty well. This, this they're getting oh, no, this them in the car, this and we're like, perfect. Okay, we know that. Like, and she's like, "You, he was talking about killing people in the future." We're like, "Oh, the fucking brakes are the future." Oh. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Martin Mull shows up at the top of the hill, and we're all screaming because we're like, <laughs> "No! <laughs> After all this, he's yeah. gonna die!" Yeah. <laughs> all night long, or for f- a week, he's been trying to get back to the house. <laughs> Right. We thought he's going to get nailed with this car because the she's like, yeah, yeah, she's like, I want to go fast. And we're like, oh, yeah. and we saw the beginning when Brad Pitt is racing through and yeah. almost hits right. the kid. And, we've seen, and we have seen a shot of Martin Mole on a mountain yes. right. coming like on his way to so it's everyone. Like the, we're like watching the perfect storm about to happen. Right. Right. <laughs> it's, like, oh, it's it's the trains. What, what's coming from Boston? Yeah. What's coming from Chicago? No. Oh, oh, my God. It makes sense. It's, oh. Holy it's all shit. coming together. <laughs> Oh my god. Is this movie this genius? Movie, is this movie brilliant? <laughs> yeah. Is this movie genius? <laughs> it might well, be. He does not get hit with the car. No. Oh. He doesn't. Also uh, disappointed. But that also provoked a, a yeah. reaction. I wasn't know, disappointed. Like... I was relieved. <laughs> Were you? I want to see yeah. him get launched. No, I think there was relief, right? I was relieved. He survived. Yeah. I, mean, I, yeah. I would have been fine either way. Like, I'm glad either way it could have gone, I would have been for it. And Brad then, Pitt pulled the yeah. emergency brake. Yes. Yeah. He yeah. was yeah. able to stop the car. Nice, like. Stunt driver work there. Right. Yeah, nice. yeah. And he's like, young lady, have you been cutting class? Yep. Freeze frame. Freeze frame. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Credits. It's like, dad, you have no idea. Bravo. Yeah. Bravo well done. Well done. Good work, everybody. Uh, cutting class was filmed before a live studio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been nice if they all came out and took a bow together in front, <laughs> under the stage lights like yep. that. <laughs> what a bizarre... <laughs> Goofy movie. All right. So I guess uh, your question, uh, if you've been following along this far, is are you contractually obligated by wa- listening to the show to watch this movie? Well, we're going to tell you. But first of all, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. His name's Igor. Bring us the mail. 
Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail! So many letters, our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. I got nothing. <laughs> and this movie, yo. Uh, still he, washing over me. Yeah. Yeah, he's frequently mopping up blood and popcorn. Right, yeah. Yeah, he yeah. does have his bomber jacket on, though, which is pretty <laughs> sweet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Looking good, Igor. Well, thank you. Uh, Igor has a PhD. Did you guys know this? I know. Right? In, chemi- in chemistry. No, it's in grave digging, but still. <laughs> he went to school for He's a doctor of grave many digging. weeks I was just to get that. off of his lab kit in the back. Uh, well, that's for personal experimentation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we should let the good folks at home now know how they can follow along and uh, send their letters to Igor by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter at Sat Freak Show. Or they can email us directly. Saturday Night Freak Show Yahoo.com. Or follow along on Instagram for the time of your life. Saturday Night Freak Show about tonight's movie, Cutting Class. Steve Carney writes in and says, Cutting Class is awesome. I wish Brad Pitt had started more horror films because he's always one of the best parts about them, even if the movie is not good, like World War Z. Mm. Yeah, I wish he would do more, too. It'd be fun. We're Why not? Gonna, we're never going to see the World War Z like original version that like went to Russia and like had this huge ending and they changed it. Oh, they did they change a lot? Really? Like, I know. That was I like a huge that. story. Yeah. I was I never remember. invested in this movie. Uh, so because yeah. yeah. it was oh yeah, it went through like millions of dollars in <laughs> reshoots. I did not know. This. Um, Aaron Dawn Murphy's mom says, "Oh wow, I love the soundtrack, but I never fully got into the movie." Oh, hmm. that's a bummer. Yeah. It does have bad. one of them classic 80s uh, it pop. It's got a pretty good soundtrack. Yeah. Pop synth uh, soundtracks. Travis Legler says, ah, yes, Brad's career was moving forward after he starred in an episode of Freddy's Nightmares in 89. Oh. One reviewer of the film stated, it's good campy fun with some of the dumbest scenes you can grab from a slasher of this decade. And they're not wrong. You should be or it should be interesting to see what you to see what brought this to the freak show. Oh, should be interesting to see what this what brought this to the freak show. You have my full attention. Uh, the mm-hmm. what is Michaela? <laughs> yeah. There you go. I mean, I saw 80s slasher, Brad Pitt. Kind of didn't need to know much right, more after that. Yeah. 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 There you go. It works better. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. You know, Sometimes it works out. So you got to mm-hmm. put it back here. Uh, Adam Kaler says, great pick. Martin Mull must have loved those Homeward Bound movies because he was determined <laughs> to make it back home. <laughs> I have trouble finding my way out of a target. <laughs> we all it did do. feel very like especially the end of Homeward Bound where they're all like running into the backyard that's what it felt right. like when he, he was yeah. coming down he's, that path. he's shadow who's yeah, falling in a sh- pit yes. and had to climb his yes. way out oh that's so yeah. sad that movie's so fucking sad I tried to rewatch that maybe like five or six months ago as an adult with adult eyes you cannot watch that movie because you're just like anxious by all the things the animal actors are I being put through I can't watch animal movies yeah it's that one especially can't do Oof. it yeah unless it's Roar all right. Roar. All right. That's different. Uh, That's different. Last week, we watched a movie called Slaughterhouse Rock. That we uh. did. <laughs> Phil Hayner writes in and says, an American werewolf in prison? Mm. Oh, there you go. Well, no. <laughs> in a Not word. close. In a word, no. But it did steal from American werewolf. It in very life. much right. did. The yeah. cover it looked like. Did. Yeah. 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 Uh, Peter Gatt says, how did the producers get the money to make this crap is a question that needs answering. Well, that's a good question. I think, didn't we say, I don't know, was that confirmed that somebody was in the movie was also like his dad or something? Yeah. Like, okay. mm-hmm. Yep. The main producer, dude. Yeah. The money, main dude money, was um, producer's son. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Novato Judoka says, damn it. Malone me once. Shame on you. Malone me twice. Shame on you. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's a lot of shame I, for you guys. Uh-uh, I, I regret nothing. <laughs> All right. Uh, the week before, we watched a movie called The Initiation, and uh, uh, we posted a photo, the infamous photo oh, that boy. made Sean choose the movie. <laughs> and Mike I, chose said, I feel like I missed something before too. the photo, <laughs> and then I looked it up, and that was the first photo we found. And you oh. said sold. <laughs> it did confirm my pick. Yes. <laughs> well, Michael Whitaker said that is giant, uh, definitely a giant penis costume. Yes, it yeah, is. Yes. Yes, it is. Have hardly ever been spoken. Jinx the Ninjas said, greatest 
costume ever. <laughs> I love it. Jinx the ninja. Go, someone go cosplay that as a horror convention. It'll be a real deep cut. It'll yeah. be a real deep cut. Oh, <laughs> so initiation. much detail on it. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it on our uh, aforementioned social media. Well, thank you all Indeed. for uh, writing in. We appreciate yes, it. Thank, yes, you. thank you. And you are keeping Igor employed. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's Indeed. right. You know, we don't want to. And fed. Uh, yeah. I he know. He eats some of your mail. Sorry if it doesn't get to us. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to go around the table and tell you whether you are bound to watch Cutting Class, starting with Colin. What did you think about 1980-somethings Cutting Class? <laughs> <laughs> starring late, Brad Pitt. Late 80s Cutting Class. Starring Martin Mull. What did you think That's of right. Cutting yeah. Class? Uh, I was, I was, I was kind of hoping you wouldn't pick me first, because I oh, guess I'm, I'm still I'll on go. the first. No, no, no. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I mean, I know it was uh, goofy. I know we had a good time with it. I don't think it works as a movie. And I don't think like if you told people to watch it, that they're going to have the experience with it that we did. I think you go into it with. uh, I mean, that's why I was like, should we tell them it's a comedy? And then even then it's like, is it does it stand out as being funny? Like, I don't know. We thought it was funny. Um, But it doesn't really work as a slasher movie. It was kind of underwhelming. Um, I, I don't know. I'm like on the fence about this one because I had a good time watching it. So it's like, well, you know, if you have the same experience that we do, it's fun. But it's like it doesn't really work as a movie. It's like bad in a lot of ways, you know. But I like the people in it. Um, man, I can't make up my mind on this. This is this is what you want me, us to circle back to you, Colin. When you're <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I mean I gotta, you know, you gotta come down on it one way or the other. Shoot um, or get off the pot. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's it like was, it's stuck. It was not horrible. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was the DVD full quote. It was not yeah, horrible. I liked the people. <laughs> You know, I mean, it wasn't bad. I like that there's like, people in it. Yeah. Right. That's like that one movie we had where I read the back and said it was like, it was crazy. Or it said yeah. something just like, that's from the bad review. Well, it goes, you know, I mean, I guess if you compare it to something like Slaughterhouse Rock, then I'd say, like, well, this is better than Slaughterhouse Rock. Right. But it's, I mean, I guess, okay, I would recommend it, but you have to know that it is like some, it, like I said, I think the way you frame it is it's Roswell Pallenberg taking a script and just fucking having his own way with it. Mm. You know, and like, I'm just gonna, I have to make this funny in order for it to be interesting to me. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, okay, I get, I see what's going on there. Deadpan comedy. The people are funny. Um, okay, fine. <laughs> fine. If I have to. Yeah, if I have if to. Because I, I know you guys funny. are all going to like it. I think that's, You don't know that. You I have know. no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. This is, we really put the heat on Colin. I know. This first. Is, I'm so sorry. Yeah. This is a weird one. Because I, I guess I don't have like No, a, you already said. Yeah. You already said. All right. Let's commit. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Sure. Can't go back now. Yeah. No take backs. Cutting said, class. Oh, sure. It was, yeah, no any quitsies, no startsies. It was <laughs> a fun, <laughs> fun experience watching it tonight. There you go. Sean, what'd you think? I really enjoyed this movie. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to go the opposite of you. Um, I I think you can definitely watch this on your own, mm-hmm. and the comedy is going to come through. You so can't too. have you can't have scenes like certain ones in this. Him behind the water cooler. Yeah, you can't have that that's and be like, genius. oh, that's fucking funny. Mm-hmm. Like if you're not laughing at that and not enjoying that, that I, the, you know, you have a obviously a different sense of humor. But I think there is tons of funny shit in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think everyone's playing it great. I mean, I enjoyed this so much. I I I want. I'm, I might go get this movie. Somewhere Whoa. I might find it because this was so fun and ridiculous to watch. Everything we said tonight, like, and it really is like I would describe it to people like it was written as a slasher, it was directed as a comedy. Mm-hmm. Go forth and enjoy yourself. Mm-hmm. I had such a good time. I think you can have a good time watching this by yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is a fun movie. There's so much ridiculous stuff and so much lurking. And just visually, it's uh, it's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I recommend Cutting Class. I had a lot of fun with it. There's there's part there, the characters in this are just bad mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. Like I still don't understand the. I mean, I guess I kind of do. I don't know the 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 <laughs> through line that everyone is just a fucking sexual predator for this woman. But if you go with the idea that she's just going through it, and, like not noticing these people, <laughs> it gets funnier. Like I, I think this is a very funny movie. I recommend it. I think yeah, everyone should watch this. This is great. If I, I, had I was surprised that Roddy McDowell didn't get his comeuppance because right. I thought that right. was, the, the thing was like, okay, all the people who, you know, it's like 
usually in a slasher movie, you do take yeah. that moral position. Those people all get killed. Right. But the janitor and Roddy McDowell don't. Right. Like we didn't the, we didn't even mention the scene when he's in the theater trying on wigs. Oh and yeah. He, just, he looks he looks at Brad Pitt and he's like, What are you doing here? Yeah, like, he has like a Carmen like, Miranda wig on. He does yeah. and he's like oh, great. what are you doing? Yeah. It's just like <laughs> what, what are you doing? Are you doing? <laughs> it's so funny. And for stuff like that, even though I mean the the bad thing I uh, I can say is that he didn't get to finish up that storyline, but yeah. everything, but that is the only bad thing I can say about him being in this movie. Uh, again, for certain uh, scenes like that where he's wearing the wig and all that <laughs> stuff, uh, yeah, uh, tons of fun, very funny. Uh, I liked it, and he was in class in 1984. That's probably why they put him in this, right? As another teacher, I don't think I've seen class. Oh, you should see that movie, yeah. okay. Holly. Mm. What did you think about cutting class? This movie was tons of fun. Tons I. Of fun. I yeah, it, it's so, there's so many what the fuck moments in this movie. It's, oh my God. And ordinarily, you know me, when people in a movie are this like rapey with their, with their atmosphere, like I, I'm put off by that. But in this, it's so ridiculous and it's every single person. I think, like, I wasn't joking earlier when I was like, is this movie genius? <laughs> like, the right? way, like, the way the ending comes full circle for, like, multiple storylines, I'm like, this is genius. Yes. <laughs> I, I, have so, I have so much mad respect for the script that the director took and what he did with it. Like... I, I, I loved it. I thought it was so much fun. I was never bored watching this. I mean, yeah, the kills aren't super graphic. They're not super gruesome. But everything else is just so entertaining that I didn't even care. It was it was so much fun. It's everything I want from a ridiculous 80s slasher movie. It was it was a good time. I definitely recommend it. Michaela. Uh, this is what I love about this podcast is that I love mining for lost like slasher gems oh, of sure. the 80s like this, you know, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it's a doom asylum. Sometimes it's a cutting class, you know, yeah. Um, but you don't know until you watch it. And I love that when I go into IMDb for this on the bottom, there'll be like 10 more movies su suggested exactly <laughs> yeah. like this. I was going to point uh -huh. out and I totally forgot. There are more spin kicks in this than the last Chuck Norris movie we watched. Yeah, there is. <laughs> yeah, he didn't spin kick that devil oh, once. Not once. Oh nope. um, but Brad Pitt sure did. It's just a rock. <laughs> You're a moron. Jesus. <laughs> yes. Yeah, this movie was just so much fun. It was so insane and cartoony, and I love that they... I like... I really am preferring the sense of humor to like the kind of well that happened like fourth wall breaking sense of yeah. humor that's in everything right they now. They legit did the Scooby Doo where she like runs up the stairs and the janitor comes out the other yes. door at the same yeah. time. Yeah. It was yeah. incredible. Yeah. It's great. Bring this right. sense of where humor. Are those kids? Yeah. Right. Bring this sense of humor back to the movies. Do it, <laughs> you cowards! Like do it do and it do it this way. Do it and do it. Yeah. Do it in movies for adults. Yeah. You know. Um. Because I, I loved that it was so cartoony, but it was also R-rated, and it was just insane, and mm -hmm. like, I, I, it was everything I could have wanted it to be, and Brad I Pitt loved cried it. In a phone booth. He did. In this movie. Oh yeah, he that was. Did. I thought yeah. he was gonna go Stella. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. Stella. He was. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I thought it was Ron Burgundy. That's yeah, what I was. <laughs> he was. Yeah, it. I mean, just just another reason to watch it. So yeah. you have to watch it. It's. I can't think of anything else quite like it. So yeah. I don't know what to say. Other than I loved it. Yeah, it was great. Fun. You got to watch it. That is, yeah. That's uh, Freak Show approved. Yes, so it is. So now you have to watch it. Them's and the rules. Let us know what you think. Indeed. All right. So uh, next yeah, week, days. we are going to watch a movie that's chosen by... Colin. What are we going to watch next week? Since it was conjured on uh, last, uh -oh. last week's episode, I think we're going to do it. We're going to rip the Band-Aid off. Alice Cooper is... Monster dog. There All right. Go. Oh, that sounds good. Go. A monster dog. You're going to have to uh, follow along and find out. Ooh. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, until that is then. usually the question. Like, it's called monster dog. All what right. are we getting I'm, into? There's not going to be a monster or a dog. I'm just going to assume dogs are going to die in this one. I just have to assume. Yeah, probably. I haven't seen it in a long, <laughs> long, long time. But now there's a shiny new version of it out. Oh. Uh, I think it came out a couple of years ago, so there it'll be all cleaned up. Uh, all right. So until then, I guess, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.